What's up, Wisconsin? From the Inside Wisconsin Studios, Trevor Thomas, John Anderson. J.A., this got brought up to me the other day. People don't know that this isn't just an audio podcast. Some people watch it on YouTube. Others listen right. to it. So when you and I, at the beginning of a show, go, oh, look what I'm wearing. Look what you're wearing. They're like, why the hell do you do that? It's because you can see us online. And today, right. I hope you guys that are listening see this. I'm in a tutu. I'm in so a tutu. You're bold because I'm not putting this on my head. <laughs> why? It's okay. I think it's the hat, cool. but I'm not putting this on my head. I've had people ask me that they're very aware, Trevor, that this is a video podcast. But there is—is is there a way I can just see Anderson and not see Trevor? I wow! Get that, yeah, I get that a lot. I can make that happen. There you go. Say so, hi to Andy North in the corner. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah, put it back up there. By the way, that you should see Andy all the time. Just a quick, hey. you know, gratuitous. There's Andy. That's how I know my shot is good. Is when Andy's in the corner. Andy's always yeah. with us. They're there all you. lined up. All right. Yeah. So on today's show, we've lined up the guy from Festival Foods, the owner, the CEO. The, Who's giving uh, you this stuff so that you can run in the turkey trot? That's right. You're not just you're, you're not required to go to Festival Foods in a tutu. You need to. This is all about the Festival Foods turkey trot. Those, you can still get rain. registered through 8 a.m. on Thanksgiving yeah. morning. Okay. Uh, hey, if I do run, all right, it's a five mile run. Let's say I run a 5K run, isn't it? Uh, I thought Mark said five mile. I think okay. it's a two mile walk or five mile run. Regardless. Uh, I guess we need the yardage and the uh, mileage in order to set an over under on how fast I may or may not be. How fast do you think I can walk two miles? We'll go with that. How long will it take you to walk two miles? Yeah. Uh, so you, you probably have a larger stride than most. Fair. Um, but I'm still going to go 18 minutes and 18 minutes. There's no, you won't be tired. So I, I, let's go 36. 36 minutes to walk two miles? Yep. I'll take the under. Okay. All right, let's chat with Mark about it. Mark Skogan from Festival Foods. Inside Wisconsin is brought to you by Baycare Clinic, Blaine's Farm and Fleet, the University of Wisconsin Platteville, Roll Tech, Festival Foods, Capital Credit Union, North Star Mohican Casino Resort, American Family Insurance, Miller Lite, and Aaron's Company. I said this to Dan Aaron's too, the, the man of the hour. That's this guy this time. It's Mark Skogan, CEO and owner of Festival Foods. What's up, Mark? Good to see you. Hey, everything's good. Good to see you. Well, you know, I said this to Dan Aarons, too. I said, did you did you have to sell snowblowers or could you have been a priest or a basketball player or a, a <laughs> Viking a warrior or something else in your life if you had chose to? I guess that applies to you as well as you as you've been into the family business. Yeah, I, I used to get asked that question a lot. It seemed like I'd do a presentation at a college, and that's where it usually came from. Those kids would ask, you know, did you want to do something else? Were there other options? And I always thought it was interesting because I had never thought of it. I just grew up in the business and, and knew I liked it. And, and later on in life, somebody said to me, if you want your kids to do the same thing you have for a career, you know, don't go home and complain about how bad it is at the dinner table. And so <laughs> apparently me growing up, I just listened to my parents, uh, you know, and the enjoyment they had in the business. And my sister and I spent a lot of time horsing around in stores when we were little kids, you know, so I, it, it never, nothing ever seemed like it was a better fit. I'm dealing with that now. My son, who never had a sniff of interest in journalism, uh, called one day and he said, Dad, I've switched my major for the third time. I'm in broadcast journalism. I'm like, well, where, where did that come from? <laughs> so apparently I didn't do it right. So, uh, <laughs> I don't have a question here. I just want to point out that uh, we, we met briefly at the Jigger Inn and then at the airport in Edinburgh, and Trevor wasn't there for that. Um, <laughs> so this whole thing out here in the east where I said everybody tells me about their trendy farm-to-table restaurant. And, and I, I tell them that's great. If you really think about it, everything's farm-to-table. Uh, but not everybody can be catchy and trendy. Like day in and day out, you're the middleman, and you're really important here. Um, like I don't, I get the responsibility of running a business, but do is there a responsibility? Like I'm, I'm feeding America. I'm feeding Wisconsin. I don't think it felt that way that much before COVID, but then when that happened, you realize that um, you did have an essential job, and you know it, it just highlighted the fact that we were doing something uh, pretty cool all along, and. Um, you know, unfortunately, it took that for us to maybe look at it a little differently and realize that this is something, you know, special that we do to, to feed a state or part of the country. Looking at it differently, though, Mark, is what you guys do best. That's what Festival Food is known for. You you took the mom and pop grocery store that your grandfather ran back in 
1930s, I believe, and just gave it a larger footprint. Yet it still feels like a mom and pop grocery store. So what was the history behind you taking what grandpa built and just blowing it up? Yeah, he started his first business in 1946 in a 2000 square foot store. And my dad and his two brothers lived there connected to the store. That's how they did groceries. And back then, I mean, I obviously wasn't born, but uh, a grocer was kind of the community hub. That's where people went. There weren't, you know, there was no uh, social media and in other ways people connected. You just saw your friends and stuff at the grocery store. And and so, yeah, it was that mom and pop feeling. You counted on the grocer to be involved in the community. And over time, you know, bigger companies bought smaller companies out and it became sort of a impersonal uh, business, I think, in many ways. But because we're family owned and still very close to the business, we still feel that's the right way to do it. It's the only way I've known how to do it. And sure, it works to be done in different ways, the way bigger companies do things. But uh, it's pretty cool to still be able to be involved in communities and giving back and caring about the associates that work with us and uh, having that mom and pop feeling as much as we can, you know, even though we've grown and it's hard to know everybody in the company and uh, you just you have to have that culture foundation though. And I think that did start with my grandpa and how stores were way back in those days. You kind of touched on the questions I was going to have is how, how do you keep that, that, that culture, that feel as you try to get bigger, as you grow it and, and kind of make that decision that, um, small is nice, but we can be better and we can serve more people. Yeah, that's tricky. We have over 8,000 associates now. So um, getting them all to feel like this is something special and that, you know, the culture of caring for one another and guests is important. But I think in a short answer, the best way I can say it is we have something called our boomerang basics and there's 27 actionable items. And we talk about one per day and, uh, we get in a huddle in our stores every day with those associates and read the, the basic and then talk about what does it mean to you. And all those things are really the roadmap and the game plan for how we're going to sell groceries and be successful. And um, rooted in there is really, you know, that family business sort of feeling. One of the basics is we are a family. And, um, you know, and so that means you know, really being interested in people's lives outside of work. And when they have tough times, uh, maybe somebody passes away in their family, we end up with quite a few teammates that end up at those funerals or weddings or whatever the case may be. So it's those sort of things that keep us together as a family. And um, we're pretty proud of that. It's not easy, though. Uh, you, you get a lot of people on the team and they uh, quite often aren't around all that long. And uh, so it's... Uh, it's, it's tricky, but it's the right way to do it in our book. You mentioned earlier how much community means to festival. And obviously it means something to you, Mark. A lot of your personality getting to know you a little bit over the last decade or something like that. A lot of you comes through in the stores. And I think the biggest one is there's nobody that loves fireworks more than Mark Scope. <laughs> and you now sponsor literally almost every fireworks show in the state. So what is it with you and fireworks personally? Well, I can't take credit for that. I think my dad really started it. That's where we had our first fireworks show was in the Onalaska area. And um, what made sense then and worked out well and people appreciated became a situation across the state where uh, city governments, county governments used to pay for the fireworks. And we all know how tough it is to have money in, in government right now. And, and so they would cancel shows over time. And we figured, you know, this is a great way to give back. It's family. It's fun. It's free. And, uh, you know, the 4th of July is special to so many people and it's such a good fit. And I think we have 28 shows uh, around the state now on the 4th and uh, we love doing it. You know, it gets stressful to try and organize that stuff and stressful about weather, but uh, it's well worth it. We have a good time. How do you pick out and choose community events? And, and let me just, uh, before you get on that, I want to kind of preface a little background that my wife and I have a small foundation and we spend a lot of it at the food bank in uh, Columbia, Missouri to help kids uh, get fed on weekends and holidays. We've done some things back uh, in Wisconsin with Ben's wish, which is the same kind of thing and aligned with that because uh, I had a wise teacher once tell me kids have a hard time listening to the teacher if they can't hear over their stomach. <laughs> Where is it you choose to go out because there are so many needs and you'd like to serve as everybody. Where, where do you guys start with those philanthropic efforts, aside from, obviously, the community of the fireworks, but beyond that? 
Yeah, there isn't much we really say no to. You know, technically it becomes sort of sports teams that we can't do that well because there are so many. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, every everybody's got kids that are playing soccer and baseball and basketball. And where do you stop that? But all the other nonprofit type stuff is really what we get mostly involved in. And I really can't say that there's a, a description of what, um, you know, we do get involved with or not. You name it, boys and girls clubs. Uh, United Way has really been big for us for a long time where our associates give to, I think we're at about 78, 8% of our associates give something to the United Way. And when you figure a lot of them are high school kids, um, that's pretty impressive, but teaching them the value of giving back. And, you know, even if you start small at a dollar a paycheck, that's still doing something. You pull it together with all the other uh, teammates that we have and it, and it makes a difference. So um, there's not much we say no to. There's so many great nonprofits out there that are doing things that are so important in our communities. It feels good. I mean, we're supported by the community. We feel it's the right thing to do to give back to that same community. And I know that culture isn't in um, all businesses and that's okay. You know, I've been on the United Way, uh, I've been the United Way chair before. And so I'd have to go out and ask some of the bigger companies and you could just tell it wasn't part of uh, their culture. And again, that's okay. It just, it's just not there, but, um, we just think it's the right thing to do, and we're fortunate enough to be able to do it. A big community event that's coming up is the Festival Foods Turkey Trot. You two have something in common that I don't. Yeah, you're in London, whatever. Uh, <laughs> you're runners, right? You you both have ran a marathon before. Mark, you've done a marathon, yeah? Yes, uh, three or four, something like that. Ah, wow. Good for you. That's I nice. did How many have you same, done, Tom? I did two on the same day. No. Yeah, Why would you do that? My first and my last. <laughs> um, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Wow, New York 2011. Uh, that's how mm. I did. Yeah, and now and now I've broadcast the event, uh, the New York Marathon, like 11 times, and it's so much easier to just sit at the finish line and let them all come to you. Like it's exactly. much better, much yeah. better. So part of me thinks that that's where this idea of the turkey trot came from. This is the first episode that I've done in a tutu. Sweet. This is kind of fun. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thank you. And this says. I run because I really like food and clearly I can afford some more running. So talk to us about the turkey trot and running. Again, not my idea, really. It was uh, Sean Ryan, a local race director who's got his fingers in everything in Wisconsin and outside of the state uh, for running. And I remember him coming to me and saying a lot of years ago and saying, you know, there's really a hole in the running schedule uh, in the Green Bay area. Uh, and that is around Thanksgiving. A lot of places in the country have a turkey event uh, how, or a Thanksgiving event. And um, so about a year later, I said, all right, let's talk more about it. And we started, you know, in one community and it's really grown. Again, I would have never thought people were looking to do so much on a holiday, but they really are. Um, you know, they've got family around and usually the meal's not till later. So they get up in the morning and do a two mile walk if they want with often, quite often with their pet. And uh, we're a five mile run and uh, very well attended, very fun for everybody. And, uh, you know, raises money for the boys and girls clubs and the YMCAs in our communities. And it's been a winner. It's fun. I don't run anymore, though. Uh, I, I fortunately um, have an excuse in that I had an injury that uh, would kind of make my left leg numb. So that wasn't any fun. And they said, yeah, oh. if you lay off the running, I think you're going to be just fine. And they were right. So. <laughs> me too. I got the excuse. Yeah, me too. I'll this is you. uh what do you got, Trevor? No, no, I was gonna say there's some cool gear. I mean, you got yeah. some too, I think, Jay. I do, but this is the ingenious part, right? So we're turkey trot, but if we hang on to that, did you look at that? Now we can go to a Packer game and we wow, I didn't even know that. <laughs> I didn't even know I don't have one of those. Look at yeah. this. Oh, so you get, get the big screen. I will say this, okay, because you said I have this too. This is what's genius, okay? Because everybody hands out a t-shirt, you can only have so many t-shirts. I have a stocking cap from a, a, a race I did. I wear it all the time. Socks and stocking caps are what people should be handing out. Yeah. And the other part is this actually comes down to that this trickles down to the community because you have that and it's chilly in the morning. Usually you put that on, you start running it, and you just toss it aside so often. And and you get unbelievable amounts of clothes when you pick up and make donations to Goodwills and other places that it seems odd. You're like, God, I'm so hot. I'll take care of that. Like nothing gets wasted in those races and it trickles down into a lot of people in a lot of ways, aside from just the money uh, that is raised when it comes through there. Sure. 
So, okay. So you've told us that quite frankly, from what I can tell so far, you're just really lucky to be in the chair because you've got all these good people around you that are doing all these things and you're just making sure you shepherd them. But <laughs> tell me, I kind of overheard you talking in the bus about trying to start a store and it had, it had not gone well. I will leave the Wisconsin city name out of it, but you know, that you run into this person or zoning and like, how hard is it to open a store? I feel like, okay, I'll find a, I find a place that's big and I'm going to start selling groceries. But apparently it's harder than that. Yeah, <laughs> you get surprised. You know, the, we have 70,000 square foot stores. That's a lot of space and you need a lot of volume for that to work. And you can be in a big city and think you've got it right. Lots of rooftops very close by and they just don't come. It's hard to make people switch where they shop. People are used to you know, where things are in a store and the experience they have. And if you're lucky, you build a store in a place that the people aren't happy where they're already shopping and they're <laughs> willing to change a little bit easier, but that doesn't always happen. And then sometimes you think a store will, you know, be slow growth and it hits big. So, you know, we do surveys to try and figure this out. And after so many years, they were so wrong all the time that we just said uh, we need to go a little bit more by gut here and figure out if uh, the location could use a new store. Great. Saber metrics, throw them out. That's what I yeah, said. Exactly. But, but like if you just say, here, pick someplace. I don't know if you have a store in Rhinelander. OK, but let's say that's an empty market. How long from uh, we're sitting around saying, dudes, what if we tried uh, guys Rhinelander to now I have, I can, I can go and I can check out. Sure. It takes us uh, six months to build it. You know, we've done them in five, but that's really pushing the builders. And these days mm -hmm. when you can't get things, uh, sure. it takes longer. Um, but then the idea probably starts a year before. So, you know, year and a half is probably the total time. And I think, you know, you may have heard me talking about some cities, municipalities are easy to work with and they're very inviting and they want you there. Mm -hmm. And some, it often feels like, you know, they're doing you a favor by building something ground up in their community. And uh, I don't get that, but, you know, right. um, maybe they have their reasons. Yeah. We have that on so, occasion here with our, our economic task force. And they're like, well, but if we build it, don't then doesn't that bring tax dollars and jobs and everything else? But, you know, sometimes if you make the roof peak, you know, six yeah, feet exactly. high, then all of a sudden we, that's, that's a deal breaker. Can't have it. Yeah, you know, how your curbs are going to look and where they're going to be located. <laughs> Yikes. All right, we chuckle now. I'm sure it's not that funny when you're actually trying to deal with that and go through yeah. it. Uh, we actually, hard, go you go, John. Sorry. Just follow up on the hard to get stuff. And you had touched on the pandemic. What kind of a challenge was that to work through, you know, shipping? And we hear we hear stories and see stuff. Here's stuff that's sitting there that is rotting because we can't get it to the store. Uh, how, just... I mean, what what was that fight like every single day? And and to some extent, it's not over yet. Yeah, I mean, it was weird, something we've never faced before. We would expect about a 98% fill rate prior to the pandemic. And it got down to, you know, we'd receive maybe 60 some percent of the products we ordered. You know, the fact is, though, our grocery stores or even in this country, we have so much variety and so much product. Yes, you're not going to maybe get your favorite product. Maybe Gatorade was out for a very long time. Well, there's plenty of other beverages in that category that, you know, mm -hmm. you're just going to have to have. And we as Americans just have never been used to that. So that was the biggest thing I would say. And we just don't like how our stores look. I mean, we take pride in not having holes on the shelf. Uh, mm -hmm. In stock conditions are very important to guests. We do surveys that show that to be in the top three things that they care about. And so being out while we had no control over it, um was frustrating but we you know we had a great team that hung in there you know some opted out of working in you know the covid conditions but not very many you know so i give them a ton of credit for being willing to mask up and be safe and and uh take care of our communities and you know they 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 got fired up by it especially when it first hit because of the panic uh the toilet paper panic and everything else and uh, so they, they had adrenaline going for a long time where it was far busier than it used to be. And, and they were doing things that were important uh, during that tough time. But then they did hit a stage of burnout, I think, and they were working more than they should. And uh, but then balanced her back out and got it back on the tracks. And we are where we are now. Staffing is still a problem, but not nearly like it was during the pandemic and barely coming out of the pandemic. 
I'll just follow up and put a, a note on that from the sports world about sort of how lucky we are in this country. Years ago, I don't remember Arvita Sabonis. He was a great, great Russian basketball player. Uh, eventually came to Portland and it, he came and they were trying to recruit him to somehow get him out of the Soviet Union. And his wife went to the grocery store and was convinced, having seen this, that it was all a ploy to see these shelves stocked. That, that there could be this much uh, uh, available in America. And she's like, that's not really how it is. They're literally trying to get you <laughs> to come here. And this is how they're luring you with this false. And Shrunas Marshallonis, who was a, a great Golden State Warrior and a Pacer, I think, uh, who came from Lithuania, and his wife was the same way. They both were like, I, you know, this can't, this can't be true. And yeah. so it, it is amazing sometimes the bounty we have and don't realize. Exactly. One more quick before we go to break on this whole idea of the pandemic. Was I the only one that didn't think about toilet paper first? Like, I'm a large mammal. I like to eat. I, I understand that you ran out of a lot of things, but w w I know why toilet paper, but why toilet paper? I have no idea. Isn't that <laughs> okay, good. I mean, yeah, the food should come first, but somehow the thought of not having toilet paper scared people more than <laughs> anything. <laughs> Apparently so. It was yeah, I, hate to be, I hate to be gross now, but there are other ways to accomplish this. Other than <laughs> I thought so, too. I yeah. thought so, too. I would have grabbed food. Yeah. Anyway, we all went through it together, and you were there to bail us out. It was great. All right. Take a quick break. We're back with more with Mark Skogan, the CEO of Festival Foods. We're back in a minute. Inside Wisconsin. Inside Wisconsin is brought to you by Baycare Clinic, Blaine's Farm and Fleet, the University of Wisconsin Platteville, Roll Tech, Festival Foods, Capital Credit Union, North Star Mohican Casino Resort, American Family Insurance, Miller Lite, and Aaron's Company. Hey, remember to subscribe on YouTube, leave a review, smash the like button, just get with us. All right, so Mark, John and I argue a lot about what we should take to a tailgate. And I reached out to some members of your team and was like, give me the best of festival. And so we're going to argue about this a little bit, but I have the, the paper bag next to me. And we'll see if this lands with okay. what you should take to the official tailgate of the Green Bay Packers. So the first piece, I was told it's got to be potato salad. Am I right? Like festivals on potato salad? Absolutely. Is this the thing you, John? Are you a potato salad guy? I am. You just gotta be careful, right? Because you want to get you want to get on that early. You don't want to save that for after the game if it's not properly refrigerated. <laughs> or well. That out in the sun yeah. for a while. So, gotta be very yeah. careful. We don't need to yep. see people eat on TV. That's the worst it's thing. It's good. You can it's do. fine. I know. Yep. Yeah, it's that's good. Okay. And you can drink okay. a Bloody Mary on TV. Just right, trying thanks. to help. Yep. Fluff. Gotta have fluff. What flavor? This is Snickers. I'm not dumb. <laughs> right. This is the Snickers fluff. Well, what is that? Because I don't know what that is. I would love to eat it for you, but it was it's probably, I think it's marshmallows and jello all ground up. So it's, God, well, uh, yeah. Yes. You realize Trev, by you eating that doesn't tell me what it is. It's just you eating. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I'm hungry. I made a oh, mistake in not eat eating before. You. you don't know what it is. Okay. Festival's own mac and cheese. Got to have it. Mac and cheese. Well, John? I'm going to tell you a quick story. I, I, up until a year ago, never ate mac and cheese in my life. Swear to God. Never. Wow. Ever. That's you fixed it, right? About yeah, I did. Child, but, um, I don't know that I can take that to a tailgate. That's going to get cool. That's I got to figure out how to heat that up. I'm not sure I'm wild about mac and cheese at a tailgate. Right. I'll Creamy eat mac and I'm cheese. I'm all in on it. I just don't know if that's the yeah. spot. All right. I'll give you that. Brats and hamburgers, right? Got to have them. So See, here's what I like. No utensils involved. A lot of that, my thing is I, I'm not sure <laughs> where, you know, potato salads and that other stuff. I got I to gotta start bringing stuff. Yeah, I have a fork ready for look myself a, here. I'm not dumb. Me as a caveman, I'm gonna need to just eat with my hands. This is what I've got available. <laughs> okay, got it. Burger shouldn't be an issue then. The nope. official burger of Lambeau Field, the Festy Burger. Of course, there's regular ones, but I chose to get the bacon cheddar burger oh, see, and the right. mushroom and Swiss. What do you, John? Choose one: bacon cheddar or mushroom and Swiss. Really, that's a question. Did you say <laughs> the word bacon? You said the word bacon, uh, right? Okay, so right. there we go. Got it. Taken care yeah. of. Um, these brats, Mark. This so I I've been to your store a few times. I'm shocked at how many brats you have. Like this is like I can't even are you writing this all off on the company for a, real expense account like, or what's going the, on here? The, the, yeah, yeah, it is actually. Matter of fact, it is the tailgate sponsored by Inside Wisconsin, one hundred percent. How many? This is one, two, three, four, five, like seven or eight different Oktoberfest brats. I don't know what you guys are eating, but I've I've got it covered. 
Last yeah, thing. Probably 10 flavors. 10 yeah, flavors. What is this? <laughs> this is a foot long brownie. That what, looks why? delicious right there. Yeah. Uh, so the that, tailgate's going to be good. So, so, okay. So you have the single serving size and then do you have stuff in case there are more people than just one? <laughs> Wow, Trevor's Trevor's little food mart here is doing just fine. So yeah, don't right. if you'll don't excuse me, I'm not. So those just, are about so that what we got there about a dozen of the fifty thousand. Yeah, who keeps track of all that stuff, man? Fifty grand, like, what's the most unusual thing you stock? Is there a way to figure that out? Do you have something? You're like, really? We we have this. Well, have what was I stunned? looking at the other day on the shelf? There's two varieties of some obscure item that you're like, I don't even know if we need one of those. My joke is always when we're talking about things that don't matter really, and I make up the product pickled kumquats. You know, there is no such thing, but <laughs> just. Uh, <clears throat> My funny little one-liner about all the strange things that we carry. Yeah. Yeah. Pickled kumquats, right? And mm -hmm. everything that you would need for a tailgate, head to Festival Food Support, the official tailgating headquarters of the Green Bay Packers. But you know what you do have that I'm always marveling at? And this is this is a this is a great television crutch or device we use all the time is when you want to add historical context to some context to something, it's always how much was a stamp, how much was a gallon of gas. How much was a loaf of bread? Yeah. Like you guys will forever be a certain <laughs> that business, a barometer right. in America for anything, yeah. which I find amazing. Yeah, it's true. All right, J.A., time for yet another top five list here on Inside Wisconsin, presented by Wisconsin's best engineering school, the University of Wisconsin Platteville. UW Platteville offers an affordable engineering program and its graduates stay here at home in Wisconsin Driving innovation at top companies right here at home. Find out more, uwplat.edu slash engineering. All right, John, why are you mad at me? What did I do well, about your I'm top I'm tired five? of having my top fives rejected. And I oh. had, you know, like I was saying, what about that since we have Mark and like top five Wisconsin bands? And I get that it's big, but I thought I had you. And then I kind of, I don't know if I lost you at Billy Flynn Blues Band or it was Alvin <laughs> Stachinsky's All Polka Band that I used to watch on Sunday mornings. And you're like, uh, Anderson, I'll handle whatever the top five is. So, uh, I apologize to Pat McDonald and the essentials, which I was going to get on, which was eventually, and it became Tim Buck three and the future. So I got the the violent femmes and the Bodines and stuff. But I, I guess, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know why Alvin Stachinsky and the uh, all polka band sent you over the edge, but that was the end of that. So whatever you got, buddy, I'll just sit here and I'll do your bidding as you see fit. <laughs> you've quizzed me your time or two and it's it's me sitting here going yeah i don't know them yep don't know that yep 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 don't know these do you uh, know you, these poker band yeah i've lost you there you know it's done <laughs> um however when yeah. i quizzed you things typically all right so here's the suggestion that i had for our top five list right 1983 comes up a lot right you graduated yep. 1983 i was i was brought into the world in 1983 i was yeah. curious because mark's a huge music fan we'll talk more about that okay good can you recognize the Billboard Hot 100 from 1983? These would be the top five hits from 1983. What do you want, the title of the song or the artist? Uh, the title will make it easier, probably. So so you want the artist. All right, title no. of this, that's fine. All right. Give me, give me Number a title, we'll see how it works. All right, let's see if you can name these artists and or bands then. Number well, five. So this is when I graduated, 83, it would have been... 83 the first half i'm in high school there at the og gbsw and then uh the rest of it i'm down there in uh in missouri okay let's see what we got all right number five pretty yeah. easy beat it really the artist all right, is that, yeah that's 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 michael jackson okay even that's number five. i didn't even want to listen to it okay number four the title is down under that's men at work it is men at work. Sure. Nice. They probably did Overkill as well in 90 in 83. I think that was probably one of their big hits too. Overkill is not in the top 25. Okay. I'm Sorry sure. about it. All right. Number three. Man, land Flash. down under. I bet you can get Vegemite at Festival Foods, but okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Here's number three. You're two for two. Flash dance. What a feeling. Uh, uh, flash dance. Um, I don't know that Jennifer Beals didn't sing that, did she? She mm -mm. was in it. She was the the person. Uh, that the was the artist soundtrack. It is an uh, artist. Oh, uh, um, yeah. It's uh, she also did all the fame stuff, right? Uh, Irene Cara. 
Yeah, that's it. Three for three. Nice. All right. This is going to go just like every other top five list quiz I've given you. Because number two is friggin' easy. Okay. Billy Jean. Wow. Michael was, maybe it was big. And that was even off the wall. Okay. Yeah. That was the yeah, album. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And number one. I thought maybe you'd give me Spandau Ballet or something with True, a little <laughs> something a little more. Uh, what do you got? Sticks. Number one. I don't no. know. They were big then, 83. They were. Nine. So this is the number one song in the year 1983. Every Breath You Take. Oh, the police. Yeah. Let's the go. Police. Okay. So here, we'll do this. Okay. So there's the top five. Bang. Yeah. Let's go down. Do you have some of the other ones? Let's try. Because you're right. Wait, that's way too easy. All right. I'm going to go sit back and I'm going to revel in my greatness. But go ahead. Give me what else All you right. got. Six. Total Eclipse of the Heart. Bonnie Tyler. Yep. Seven. Man Eater. Paul and Oates. Number eight, Baby Come to Me. Come to me. Uh, Jeffrey Osborne? No. Um, um, give, me a, give me a hint, quick. It, uh, there's two people in it. One's a female, one's a male. Um, 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 not Peaches and Herb. No, uh, Patty Austin and James Ingram. Okay, James Ingram was the guy I could think of that was not Jeffrey Osborne. Okay, I missed that. Right. One. Two more, nine and ten. Maniac. Uh, that was that was again. I don't know who it was. That was from Flashdance. I don't care. Michael Cimbello, number ten. Yeah, would have Sweet never gotten. Dreams it. are made of this. Uh, who am I to do Eurythmics? That's it. Well, you were pretty damn good at the top five. Uh, we lost you in a couple. Yeah, of the gee, next I, I missed one and the other one. What a shame! Oh, wow. Well, well I guess like one of you. Now you know yeah. why I like to quiz you and not the other way around so much. Yeah. All how right. about how about uh, how about um, Peebo Bryson and Roberta Flack? Why? Celebrate Where? my love. Is that on there? Peter, celebrate. Uh, don't see him. All right. What was your just... favorite song from '83? Let's see if it's on here. Is that it? Was that it? Did wow, that I don't even like I said. I don't know. We probably everybody's listening to Sticks or Journey. I have no idea. I guarantee it wasn't. It was not Michael Jackson. I guarantee it. Wow, it, well, you were apparently the only one. The yeah. first That's stick song way. comes in at number 28. If you had to pick one stick song, the biggest stick song of 83. Oh, the biggest. Uh, um, cheapers, I'm wasting time, but I guess it's the <laughs> internet and we can put this together. Um, sticks, Dennis DeYoung, uh, not best of time. Uh, Mr. Roboto. Mr. Roboto, that's it. Man, you're on fire. Yeah, because we'll some of the other right ones are too early for that. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, too early. When I How many of those would you have gotten, by the way? Um, the Michael Jackson songs for sure. What's ironic about the first song, every th- every breath you take, yeah. that's not the police for me. That's Puff Daddy. <laughs> that's P. Diddy. He redid that. So when I read that, I was like, oh, no. Well, look, no I'm going to show people how my laptop closes. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do it again. Please, God, Mark, save us. We're back inside Wisconsin. Trevor Thomas, John Anderson, and Mark Skogan, the CEO of Festival Foods. So we talked a lot about how involved you are in the community in segment one, but you got your hands, Mark, in a lot more things than just Festival Foods these days. You are a music fanatic, Epic Event Center here in Green Bay, and you purchased, which John and I were really excited about, the Green Bay Rockers. Damn it! This shoulder, Trev. Uh, what's all that about? There's other there's other passions in your world, man. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I couldn't have drawn it up. Um, I chased the music idea for five years. It went on and off again. Um, I loved going to shows, so I got to see shows around the country, see really awesome venues, see some that you know weren't so great, and, and then have a few friends that were interested as in this as well and were with me in traveling. And so my idea was that we should get a smaller size venue uh, to Green Bay, like you see around the country. So by the time that we had the great opportunity in the location that we're at, uh, we had a list of what needed to happen in that facility and make it as great as it could be for not only fans, but for bands. Uh, a lot of times you'll get to venues that are Great for the fans, but not so good for the bands. Uh, lousy green rooms, no loading docks, small backstage, uh, 
or vice versa. The fans um, don't have a comfortable setting. The bathrooms uh, are not plentiful. The bar is too small. Uh, mm -hmm. And you're at a show, you don't want to spend any time in the bathroom waiting in line. You don't want to uh, spend time waiting for your drink. And so some of those things we created and uh, we think we've hit a home run on, on what the facility is. And it's been a lot of fun. The rockers part of thing came about um, from some guys that own uh, multiple uh, teams in that league. And they wanted to divest of this one. And they had an offer from a group that was made up of people that mostly I believe weren't in the state. And we we're already sponsoring the teams around the state. So these previous owners came and said, Hey, would you want to buy this? We'd prefer that somebody in state uh, bought the team. And I thought, wow, this is pretty cool buying a baseball team because I love baseball, uh, big Cardinals fan, uh, grew up watching baseball, playing baseball. And so it made sense. And <laughs> strangely enough, they're located right next to each other, which makes it that much cooler. You know, they're not even a block apart. And, so it became this little fun thing and it's kind of my hobby work and uh, I don't have to be too involved, but I do love to, you know, help decide if we're going to uh, make an offer for a band. Uh, I love going to the baseball games and it's not just about baseball in this league. Uh, the Northwoods League is about the fun things that uh, can go on for kids that are at a game. It's not just sitting there and watching baseball. So it, nothing makes me happier than watching people have fun. And if we can create those opportunities, uh, that's a, that's a home run for me. I had a chance after <laughs> Trevor, uh, we did a couple of nights at the ballpark at the old bullfrogs. And I visited with Jeff Royal about trying to buy part of the old bullfrogs. I can't believe that I could have, you know, you would have had to deal with me because yeah, right. you know, uh, I wouldn't let those other guys take over when I did that. But you guys were great. You were super inside Wisconsin. when We had a night out there to, to raise money for the production farm, which was terrific. Uh, they say that the quickest way to make a rich man poor is to either buy horses or, or buy, buy a sports franchise, right? Like that's, that's still, it sounds great. Um, but that's different than selling groceries. Like what, what'd you learn once that came under yeah. your purview? Yeah, it's not a uh, it's not a super lucrative thing. I was going to throw golf courses in there. You know, anybody who builds a golf <laughs> sure. course, it's usually about the third guy that might uh, be able to break even. Uh, so baseball does all right because not only is it baseball there, we operate the park uh, for other events. There's soccer, you know, rugby, uh, all kinds of things that people rent the park. So that gets us more of a year round uh, experience in there. So. Um, you know, that that's working and we're growing attendance and we have to continue to do that. You know, it's more fun to be there with 3000 people than it is 500. So working on that, but another place to, uh, spend some money is on music. It's, uh, it's very tricky. And you talk about building a new store somewhere and thinking, oh, this is going to work. This is, you know, plenty of population. Well, you can pick a band that you think is a big deal, um, has a big name to them generally a big past, not maybe as present, uh, and it just bombs. And that's the one that is frustrating. But you do get some wins, too, where you, you get a smaller band and uh, people go nuts for it and, you know, you get close to selling out. So it's it's tricky. Can you give us one? Give, give me one that, that, that disappointed a little. <laughs> Ice tea. Uh, Ice-T, I think people just think is an actor now, um, huh? but we actually moved the date one time because it ended up, I think, a Packer playoff game or something like that, and that wasn't going to work, but he already wasn't selling, moved it to a different date, and uh, I won't tell you how, how many tickets he sold, but amazing to me that it was that mm -hmm. few, so... Um, and then give me one who was an up-and-comer. Give me one that you caught on the fly, and you're like, oh, we had those guys early. Oh boy, let's think here. What did we just have that sold out pretty much? Boy, I'm going to go uh, brain dead on that. But, um, you know, it depends on the uh, day of the week sometimes. Um, yeah. You know, up and comers, who did we just have? There's so many that come across my desk. They, uh -huh. uh, Ryan, who books our stuff, will always send it first uh, to myself and, and Brian. And we say, yeah, we think we will hit on that one. And um, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting to see the good ones. And when you're at a concert and people are having fun, that is, that is the best. 
What sucks about that, though, is you're up against other venues in the city. You landed a major country artist, which I know I, I didn't plan on talking to you about country music, but th- we all have our thing. Uh, and Luke Combs happened to land at the Rush Center like on the same night. So it's it is hit or miss on the day of the week and what else is going on. But speaking of other venues, all right, John and I talked a little bit about this earlier. Lambeau Field and concerts and music. Mark, if you could pick three artists that you know could sell out Lambeau Field two nights in a row. You're going to put me on the spot, huh? Who would they be? Like two nights. I mean, I'll give you. Here's a you say here's country? A softball. It could be anybody. Softball, okay. Garth Brooks, right? I'll give you one. Yeah, that guy yeah. could sell out five nights in a row. Who are these? Metallic, like, a couple more. Yeah. Metallica would do it. ACDC would do it. Um, who else these days? I mean, a lot of country uh, could do it, obviously. Um, so maybe well, a row. Would, could, could Taylor Swift do it? Yes, I think so. Yeah. And how about, how about the one that my daughter is pinging me about all the time with uh, uh, how about Harry Styles? I don't think so. Not in not in Wisconsin so much. Yeah, I'm curious with that. That's another like, thing, you know. know it's we what you would what, go there. Yeah, right? what's big in some states or around the country doesn't resonate. That's another thing we have to get right all the time. Uh, somebody could be selling two, three thousand tickets, you know, somewhere else, and it doesn't. Let's take Madison for example. What they booked there in a similar size venue at the Sylvie. Um, if we took, I don't know. If we took their whole lineup of shows that they had and tried to bring it to our city in Green Bay, it wouldn't work. And that's just two and a half hours away. It's just a different uh, style of music that people listen to. And um, gosh, who do we have the other night? I can't. He is only on TikTok and YouTube. The radio stations don't even know him. Oh. And he had uh, about 700 people in the room. I mean, talk about different. How does that happen? And, wow. and then when do you flip it over to, uh, you know, getting some radio play and getting your, I mean, he could, obviously, if you get, it was a, was it a weeknight even? But it, it's, it, it's fun when you see that people who have made it from scratch and not been supported as much by a record mm-hmm. label or an agent or piggybacking off of other bands. And as I understand it, he stayed around after the show for at least an hour taking pictures and signing up. So that shows you the magic of how you get your fan base to believe in you, because I don't think there's a single other band that's been at our place that has done that. And so it's refreshing to see that different kind of approach. Making a living on YouTube. Who does that these days? Tons of people. (laughs) Tons of people. (laughs) This guy right here. Hopefully us. Hey, did you say you were a Cardinal fan? How'd you slip that in there? Uh, my uh, now, I spent a ton of time in Missouri, so uh, I'm good. It's it's a clear uh, it's a clear path how this happened. I haven't been a fair weather fan that jumped on with them. When the Braves left Milwaukee, it left yep. the state of Wisconsin without a team. <clears throat> my, this is my dad telling me this story, and my grandpa became a Cardinals fan. It was kind of become a Cards fan or a Cubs fan. He became a Cards fan, so my dad was, and we would um, my summer vacations uh, with my sister. My parents were always in St. Louis, and uh, it was really fun. Really loved the city. I, I know it very well. Been there so many times, and, and that's how it happened. Okay. okay See, so I'll buy that. I love it. Yeah, that's cool. It's good. Love you John was in Missouri, too. Love Miller Light Brewery Tour. Somebody I'll tell you about how I got thrown out of the Brewery Tour. Wow. Yeah. We're going to bleep that out. Miller that Light. takes some work. <laughs> Cards are good. Uh, tell me about your basketball career. Ah, basketball. Let's see. Uh, I lived across from the high school when I was in grade school, later moved, but um, so spent a lot of time around the school. And actually, I guess that doesn't have anything to do with the fact that when I was in high school, I had a great high school coach who was a terror, the old school kind of Bobby Knight guy, and was just pretty motivating to me. And I can remember, um, you know, I cared about basketball a lot. Um, we would break into the school. Uh, we knew how to break the door open and apparently they didn't arm them. And that wouldn't go over very well these days, but our coach knew we were doing it and just go in there and play. Um, so we were good in, in high school. I enjoyed it. Uh, we won the state championship in 88 and then uh, had the chance to go to Viterbo uh, University, which is in lacrosse and had another coach who was very good. Also, the strong yelling, screaming kind of guy. 
but the high school guy, it's so interesting. The high school guy was um, a wild man personally. And then the college coach was more of a calm religious man. So I had two different styles of guys who are over intense, but you know, I say this about it. I, um, <clears throat> I believe I learned more from playing basketball and sports than I did many other ways. I, <laughs> I know this can be controversial, but sure. I learned how to, you know, get along with people, uh, diversity, uh, work as a team, have failure, have success. It it's, uh, and from those two coaches who I didn't understand at the time, I was generally the best guy on the team much of the time. And uh, I thought, why are you picking on me? Why are you yelling at me? You know, and my parents answer or somebody else's answer would always be, well, because they expect more out of you. Well, and as a kid, you're like, well, screw that. I, I don't <laughs> I just leave me alone. <laughs> Go pick on the guy who's not playing so well. Um, but from there, uh out of college, my basketball coach took me to Australia to try and find a spot to play. Went over there. And again, I wasn't real close with this guy because we fought a lot. And here I find myself uh, cruising around Australia. And I'm thinking to myself, what in the world is going on? You know, staying in the same room with them. And, um, but we found a spot that uh, I could play that year and I wouldn't go home. And that wasn't really the goal. I was going to go home and come back. So I just stayed and uh, played a year. <clears throat> I could have stayed longer, um, but I thought to myself, you know, it's time to get on with it. It felt like a vacation because in the league that I was in, you had two Americans that were paid and then the mm -hmm. Australians weren't paid. So they uh, had jobs during the day. So you didn't always practice. You didn't always play. And so it was kind of a big vacation, hanging out at the beach and <laughs> friends coming out. And uh, But uh, I owe a lot to basketball, you know, the determination you need. Uh, in a sport, you know, where you hate losing, don't want to lose, or going to find a way to win, that all translates into the business world. Mark, I really appreciate that you are the only person that understands how much people that actually played basketball hate pickup basketball. I oh, hate it. It's the worst. I, you know, people would ask, not so much anymore, but, you know, 20 years following college, all those years, they'd be like, you still playing? We got a league. I'm like, uh-uh. It's uh, <laughs> there's a lot of, you know, in the style of basketball we played back then, it was a team effort. There was a plan. There was, you know, sharing the ball. There was, you know, it just isn't that way in pickup basketball. So it, it was foreign to me. Yes, you're using the same ball, but it was a different sport. Hard, hard to get guys on the blacktop or the wide to set four picks and pass yeah. it seven times before we take a shot. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> So one more quick thing about sports, and then we'll break before the lightning round with the ever-famous John Anderson lightning round questions. Packers, right? So we covered baseball, we covered basketball, and there is a significant involvement both on a personal level with you, Mark, and the Packers board, as well as festival foods and all the things that you can experience at a Packers game, the official grocery and tailgating headquarters of the Green Bay Packers. Tell us first about the personal side, and I asked Dan Aarons this. When things aren't going well for the green and gold, do people call board members and bitch, or is that just not <laughs> something that happens? Doesn't happen to me. Um, <laughs> you know, we're pretty well instructed that if there are concerns of any sort, where to direct them to. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I wouldn't. Be, I wouldn't be the one to uh, uh, give you the best feedback on where things are at. I mean, we we're well informed. It's a it's a good board. Um, it's a great organization. They know what they're doing. Uh, it's been great for so long, and uh, the things they've done to make it even better are, are pretty darn cool. So um, I think we should all be thankful and proud of that. And so it's great to be affiliated with them uh, being on the board. And how's then Susan, oh, sorry, go ahead. How's Susan sorry, Finkel? Because she's an old TV person. When I was there. You know, I used to watch Susan Finkel on TV. She's great. She's the president of the board right now, yeah. so that's pretty yeah. cool. And, yeah, I uh, – Remember her early in my days in Green Bay, we used them uh, to help us with something, her uh, her firm, and, uh, mm -hmm. and then didn't see her too much around town. But, uh, yeah, she's on the board and, and doing a great job and making a difference. Can we just give some beer away, please? Like, I know the Packers have to score a significant <laughs> amount of points, and that's not happening, and Miller Lite's not able to give any beer away. It's a frustrating deal. Yeah, we're joking about that. We might have to change that threshold here if we don't start scoring some points. <laughs> A few years back, it was like a gimme every game. You know, that I don't even know what the number is this year that they're supposed to score to get that free beer, but I think it's 24. Um, yeah. It ain't happening. 
<clears throat> no, it's it's been a tough one. Hmm. All right, we'll wrap it up. Less about the Packers, more about life. Third segment <laughs> coming. Mark Skogan with Festival Foods. We're back in a bit. Inside Wisconsin. Inside Wisconsin is brought to you by Baycare Clinic, Blaine's Farm and Fleet, the University of Wisconsin Platteville, Roll Tech, Festival Foods, Capital Credit Union, North Star Mohican Casino Resort, American Family Insurance, Miller Lite, and Aaron's Company. Hey, remember to subscribe on YouTube, leave a review, smash the like button, just get with us. So we're getting to the time of year, J.A., where the beer, if you don't drink it responsibly in a quick manner, freezes at Lambeau Field. <laughs> it's not that cold, but it is nice. When, it is nice when the outdoor serves as a freezer. Yeah. I had somebody yeah. in my little uh, area here in the neighborhood that I live in message me the other day and said, hey, can you jump my car? I left the light on or something like that. And I did it because I'm a nice guy, right? And no payment or anything necessary. Mm-hmm. I got a wonderful text message today that said, hey, there is a case of Miller Lite on your porch. Thanks for the jump. I go outside. Nice. This is great. I go outside. It's not there. I walk over next door, and it's my 81-year-old neighbor had a case of Miller Lite on her front porch. I'm like, so well, she stole scared, it? But... No, just wrong house. Didn't know. Yes, I get that. Um, but where I'm going with this uh-huh. is I, I talk about things freezing. Well, uh, it is a warm time of year here in November in Wisconsin. And so right. I got the message saying, hey, go get it before the beer gets too warm because warm beer. Yeah. And you don't want to you don't want a cold, warm, cold, and warm. Once it's in the f- fridge, you want to keep in the fridge. It doesn't do well with uh, extreme temperature changes. Yeah, not good. Yeah. By the way, when I was in Oklahoma, people were not they didn't understand. You're like that. You'd set it outside. You just tell people, yeah, just you can go shove it in a snowbank. Yeah, you know, it and it's even better happen. when it's really cold. Shove it in the snowbag; it actually cold, but it insulates it from being super cold. But you know, <laughs> these are you. these are things that we know in Wisconsin that we need to bring to the world. That they're like, yes. you guys are bumpkins. You're like, how about we're practical <laughs> and we're pretty smart. When your beer, yeah. when it, when the tops blow off the top of your beer bottles because it got too cold, in in you know, and I'm and ready to go because I smartly put mine to insulate it in the snowbank. We're ready to go. The only time it's happening was the NFC Championship game, 2008 froze mm-hmm. my beer froze and it was cold all right remember to get miller light delivered right to your door and you can yep. set it outside and keep it cold visit millerlight.com slash inside wisconsin or you can pretty much find it anywhere that sells beer oh. where'd you find it this time i got it at my dentist office <laughs> i bet you did that's great yeah. rinse i'm like i'm not spitting this out that's fine <laughs> rinse ribbons <laughs> celebrate responsibly miller brewing company milwaukee wisconsin 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces frozen or liquid all right we're back final segment with mark scogan festival food ceo and owner here on inside wisconsin before the ja lightning round starts i get two here no, number one festival foods is wisconsin and this show is all about wisconsin so mark tell us just how much wisconsin means both to you personally and to your organization well, obviously, it's where we grew our business, and uh, we love our communities. I think it's a wholesome, you know, friendly, friendly place to be. I mean, we believe in ten tiling in our stores and saying hello to people who are within ten floor tiles because we're warm and welcoming, and so that's just what it is. And having only lived here, I can only, you know, hear from others on what other cities are like, or when you visit, you can just tell it's different. So. Um, we love it here. And, you know, we're an independent grocer, which there aren't many anymore. And we're only in the state of Wisconsin. We get asked, are you going to move outside of the state? And, well, if we fill up every possible place in this state, then I suppose <laughs> we'll have to leak out of the state. But, uh, yeah, we love it here. All right. This is the best I can do from a lightning round. J.A., I think I finally figured it out. Mark, choose one. Golf or concerts you can only do one the rest of your life golf or concerts i think it's probably concerts just because yeah. golf is so frustrating and uh, <laughs> i uh some days you don't want to play i've never gone to a concert well maybe one or two even concerts, okay. which isn't my favorite but uh we've had a couple that not because they don't have a following and that was a poor turnout but because i don't understand how people would like music that it sounds in a certain way so Definitely concerts, but that would be yeah. tough to give up golf. Yeah. I'd quit, I'd quit golf, but I got too many nice shirts. So, <laughs> yeah, right. all right, here we go with the lightning round. I thought Trevor was going to hit on my question. He said, this is it. Obviously, the first question for anybody in your business is uh, paper or plastic? Paper. Paper, good. Uh, the store, the headquarters in De Pere. 
right? Yes. Okay, so I send my mom letters into Pier, but she lives in Ledgeview. What the hell is the difference between those two things? That's that's a post office question. I uh, I live in Ledgeview <laughs> as well, and I put De Pier on my mail. <laughs> okay, can't figure it out. I don't know where my mom lives. Uh, I can find the house, but that's it. Uh, I know you're not big. You just said on the pickup, but let's say I just I got to go to the Olympics and cover three on three. Give me your other two teammates if you had to play three on three. Oh, geez. They can be anybody. They can be your best friend from when you're eight, or you can get LeBron James. I don't care. Uh, no, Michael Jordan. Sure. And uh, Giannis. I think that'd be terrific. <laughs> I'm down with that. Uh, where did Damian Miller go to college? The Turbo. There you go. Yeah. What year did he win the World Series? Oh, didn't he win it more than once? Has there been anybody who caught more Hall of Famers than him? Unbelievable. He, he should write a book on the guys he's caught. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Uh, between he's about, Randy. I think he's about a, a week or two older than me. I think he's uh -huh. an October birthday, but he was a great older than me. And uh, yeah, hmm. playing with him was pretty fun in college. You so you play? You were a teammate of his? Yes. That's even better. Yeah, 2011 is when they won. Okay. Yeah, but he caught he caught you know uh, Schilling and Randy Johnson. Then went to the Cubs and he caught uh, Kerry Wood and those guys when they yeah. were in their prime. It was it was amazing. Uh, the last concert you saw. Oh boy, you're gonna get me here. Mm -hmm. uh, it was that one. Well, how about I'm going to Ace Ace Freely on uh, this Saturday? That we'll call it that one. Excellent. Excellent. Ex Kiss guy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Listen, if he doesn't play Beth, I don't. I, I'd walk out of the joint <laughs> unhappy. Uh, the last concert that you'd see if it was your last concert. Shine down. <laughs> who? Yeah, I yeah, knew you were yeah. gonna go blank at me. All right, for everybody listening, you know who Shine Down is. You just don't know it. Um, they're, they have many hits that are on the mellower side of things that are played in grocery stores or wherever you might go. Okay. You hear it on crossover radio. So yes, them. Okay, good. Now, now I've got some, some business questions. Name the four food groups. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, nope, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <I'll take that laughs> vegetables, grains, dairy, and meat. We're down with that. Uh, okay. give me, uh, give me your favorite, uh, festival foods aisle. Oh boy, wine and spirits. Yeah, <laughs> love it. Excellent. Uh, Trevor told me this one time. How many how many items do you have in the store? Uh, Fifty thousand. Okay, name a thousand. <laughs> no, uh, no, we're, we'll pass on. Um, so I was going to ask your favorite Packer. Give me your favorite Cardinal. Adam Wainwright. Love Waino. Excellent. Uh, most, way. most famous person in your phone. Oh boy. Uh, there's a few in there. I'll go with Donald Driver. Yeah. Who I'm, still try, I'm still trying to chase to get on here. I okay. sent him yeah. the text. And uh, <laughs> finally, where is the sunfish capital of the world? On Alaska, Wisconsin. Bang! Uh, in a very shallow lake that you can probably stand up in. <laughs> <laughs> Catch him by hand. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Just noodle them like that, huh? <laughs> So that's terrific, man. Thanks so much for joining us, Mark. Thanks for all you do uh, for the state of Wisconsin, both in just feeding us on the business side and then community wise, all you've added to it and, and the places you have given us now for uh, relaxation and leisure with the ballpark and the uh, concert venue. It's all terrific. And we're so glad that you had an hour to spend with us. Uh, we appreciate it. And our viewers here in Wisconsin, they appreciate it as well. Thank you, guys. A lot of fun. Cheers, Mark. So that ends the show. I'm hungry. Goodbye. Yeah, no doubt. I'm starving now. <laughs> right, that's it. Sorry, I got to go. What? Listen, you could just start eating it. You can eat at your desk. Yeah, I have a lot of festival things going on here from a, a yeah. standpoint. I'm I and I made the mistake of not eating before this episode for some dumb reason. I will not do that. This is don't, I'm starving. This is now. Don't go to yeah. the grocery store hungry. Good stuff. So. All right, another episode of John Wisconsin in this show. Uh, give it this to us, This is going to be what really is? quick. This is going right. to be super quick. Uh, but, you know, Festival Foods, great. Uh, Mark, and I'm thinking you know, tailgating, we got to feed everybody for Thanksgiving because that's the big deal. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking about Thanksgiving, and everybody has, instead of their turkey trot, they have the turkey bowl that everybody plays. Okay. So yeah. I'm just going to give you the team names uh, that were uh, involved yes. when we were of, of college ages when this first happened. 
Um, and we would play on the hard scrabble field of the playground at Beaumont Elementary School in Green <laughs> Bay, right there in the shadow of Lambeau Field. We got on their field. Uh, and the, it always matched uh, the, the, my friend Byron, who you, you've met, Byron and I. Mm-hmm. And uh, one day I get a, a, a invitation to the game, essentially, at Missouri. It's sent, and it is billed as uh, Byron's All-Pro, All-World, What a God, All-Stars. <laughs> against John's super wimpy nerds. So those were the oh. teams involved. <laughs> and the winner um, was? Uh, listen, we've played enough of them that I think we're probably all about 500. You know, it's it, the thing about youth sports, youth still being 20, like blowouts seem fun at first, right? You draft the team like, this is great. We're going to win 49 to nothing. Then you win 49 to nothing. You're like, well, that's no fun. At least it wasn't <laughs> in our neighborhood. And then you redrew the teams. So anyway, but yeah. And, and someday we will get back at 57. So it won't be this year, but someday, maybe before we're 60, uh, we will break out the Advil <laughs> and the football, and, and we will we... reprise Byron's All Pro, All World, What a God All Star uh, against John's Super Wimpy Nerds. And I if promise I had you, named it... the teams, they would have been different, but that this, <laughs> this is how it is divided up. If that ever happens, I can promise you that we will have a video team there. We will record that, and it will be its own segment on the show. Do you feel like you would be a better super wimpy nerd, or do you feel like you'd be better as an all-world, all-pro, what-a-god, all-star? Uh, that one. Yeah, all-star. I'll just go with all-star. Yeah, that's fine. Pick on the losing side. That's fine. You'll you'll <laughs> regret that. Time for another episode of Deeper Roots with Blaine's Farm and Fleet. J.A., a special one today. It's Veterans Day. And there is a really cool story here in Wisconsin. Uh, There's a young man named Jordan in lacrosse, ironically, where all this festival food stuff started. Mm -hmm. And he has spent the last six years. So do the math. He started this when he was 15. He raised $250,000 to erect and have built in a city park the Veterans Memorial, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial there, of all of the names from all Mm -hmm. of the soldiers that gave their everything in the Vietnam War. Uh, that are from Wisconsin. And so we really wanted to feature this from a, a Veterans Day standpoint, something very unique from a young man here in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, I don't know, Jay, pretty cool with everything that we have going on. Listen, I don't know that I can uh, do better than that. So we will, um, you know, we a lot of people call each other who, who trying to define what a patriot is these days. Uh, but those that have worn the uniform and given full measure are unquestioned. Um, in a time that many things are questioned. So uh, simply, we just say salute to that young man, and, and let's watch. Jordan. Hey, Trevor. Hey, buddy. Good to hey, see you. Good. Did, did you drive this here? Unfortunately, I did not. You did? Otherwise, I probably have a police following can we go? Can we get in that thing? Unfortunately, we can't. I thought you knew people, man. Farmers, brewers, hunters, packers, badgers, cheeseheads, neighbors. No matter what name we go by, we are bound together by our roots. These are the people, the stories, and the statriotism from inside Wisconsin. Welcome to Deeper Roots with Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Episode six here, we're in La Crosse. Yes. Deeper Roots with Blaine's Farm and Fleet. We are at Veterans Freedom Park. Yep. What you're about to see is a remembrance and honor to those who gave the ultimate sacrifice and If you think about when I started this in 2016, when I was 15 years old, on Memorial Day, I wanted to pay tribute to those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Our veterans, our great heroes. I called the Park and Rec Department, and then within 15 minutes, I got a meeting the next day. And it's been an uphill battle, and I won. The battle has been yes. won, right? Yeah. This is it. Something about a 15-year-old though, right? Like, do you think you can describe in that moment just that thought on Memorial Day where you're like, this is something I'm really going to mm-hmm. laser focus in on and get after? Well, there's a quote that lives on and on in my head by one of my favorite presidents, John F. Kennedy. He said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. and when I asked my grandma if there was something here, she said no. So I said, you know what? I'm just gonna go do it. And this was something that six years ago, you set out to bring to this community 
as a 15 year old. Yep. And here we are, you brought it, it's mm -hmm. here. When was this built? This was built in June 23rd of this year. And on this wall, this is a, a scaled down version of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, DC. Mm -hmm. And on this wall are the names of all of the fallen soldiers from Wisconsin yes. that gave the ultimate sacrifice mm -hmm. in the Vietnam War. How many total? 1,163. Wow, and they're all on there as a tribute. Let's check this out. Let's yeah. go see what you were able to, to bring together here, raising $250,000 mm -hmm. in six years, even through the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We know what this is. We've seen this mm -hmm. a time or two. Tell us what this is. This is the Battle Cross. This was donated to one of my veterans. His name is Al Hansen. Unfortunately, he was not able to see this memorial. And the proof that many people after the ceremony has been here, someone left an American flag. Mm -hmm. And you could tell people, sometimes they drop stuff at the wall as we walk up. We have four benches that have been donated. This bench here was donated by a Gold Star mom, uh, Vivian Turner, and her son is on the memorial wall. What is Gold Star? So what a Gold Star mom, father, or Gold Star families are is a loved one that lost a family member of, in service. And they present them with a Gold Star. Mm -hmm. So a Gold Star family is somebody that has a name on this wall. A lot of people donated it. It's a community effort, not just me. I'm just a simple person from home in high school. Decided, you know what, I decided to do something for the community, yeah. for our Vietnam veterans. Because listen, Trevor, they poured their blood, sweat, and tears, hopes and dreams to defend our way of life. And when something like this comes together, albeit indeed they gave everything, mm -hmm. it takes a champion and that's what this plaque is mm -hmm. all about. Yes. Is this the champion's plaque? Again, ordinary person decided to do something. Well, I would give yourself a little more credit. I don't think that this is anything ordinary. This is extraordinary work. This is a moving thing. This is also a statewide memorial. So if someone's family member is on this wall and they'll come and say, you know what, that's my father, my brother. Wow. Um, you know, my uncle, great-grandfather, he served during Vietnam. You could just walk up to this and go, we don't know. I don't know that person. I don't know that mm -hmm. person, but somebody does. Somebody grieved their loss, and mm -hmm. we're all grateful for it. So we were walking around in the front, um, and it shows the years of the Vietnam War, and then we're looking at the names, and then you come around the backside. Look at this. Like every memorial should is tell a story. Oh, wow. And the story is, you know, that Vietnam veterans have told me is, you know, you have the, the nurses, the aircraft carriers, the jets, and then you got the helicopters, and then the swamp, which is, you see many photos yeah. today. It's hard to think back and imagine that everything that's portrayed here in art form mm -hmm. happened in real life. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is not something that you and I can clearly comprehend and many people can't but obviously many can mm -hmm. it's really neat I got choked up over there just for a second because this is um, it's real life I don't, I don't know how else to put it and we were just talking about the word grateful over here and how the level of gratitude is only remembered if we never forget mm -hmm. and so it's uh, really fitting that here we are on Veterans Day 2022 sitting in a, a Vietnam Veterans Memorial that didn't exist last Veterans Day. It was an idea. Yep. Uh, but really, Jordan, your work and your dedication and your care and your love and uh, a little grit, mm -hmm. really, with patience and everything, uh, made this happen. Have you noticed, based on what you brought to life here, that those Vietnam veterans that you've met you've helped in some way heal with this? Well, again, Memorial is a way for veterans to feel connections to someone they serve with or a family member to feel connection with a family member. And, you know, people don't have to go all the way to Washington, D.C. People can come here and, you know, 
still feel that connection without going thousands of miles. If you think about it, you know, there are many honor flights that take veterans to see the real thing. Yeah. Many veterans, they can't go. And something local where they can actually touch the wall and say this was one of my classmates or yeah. someone that I served is a way that they don't have to go all that way. Have you ever been out there? I have. I have the great honor of actually being on the honor flight. You did? Yep. And it was my first time on an airplane too. Yeah? Yeah. Tell me about that experience. You know, there was, I think, two World War II veterans, 10 Korean veterans, and the rest were Vietnam. And one of the veterans said, Jordan, I know you're not a veteran, but you're one of us now. Hmm. And, you know, being that on that day, sharing that with them and get to see, you know, what their emotions were that day is just heartbreaking to see when they see that. And something you'll never forget. Mm -hmm. If you could do it again, would you do it again? Yes. We have a surprise for you. You're doing it again. Again? We got you a spot on the Old Glory Honor Flight this April to be a free agent guardian to go back there wow. to this wall that you, you did, you've been there. We wanted to send you back. So we reached out to our friends at Old Glory Honor Flight. They're actually in Northeast Wisconsin. We shared with them what you did here in La Crosse, and they said we would be honored to have them on a flight. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's coming up in April. Cool. Hopefully you get to connect with a Wisconsin veteran. Wow. Maybe you'll sit next to somebody from, that has a family member on this wall, or it was a friend, or whatever the case may be, but we wanted to send you back as yes. a thanks. This is not something that anybody had to do. This is something that you took a passion for and did, and this isn't going anywhere. Uh, so your roots are deep, man, uh, and it's only just begun. Uh, really grateful to tell your story. Thank you. Thanks, Jordan. If you'd like to pay your respects to Wisconsin's Vietnam vets and view the Vietnam War Memorial there in person in La Crosse, Here's how to do it. Open up a search bar and type Veterans Freedom Park, La Crosse, Wisconsin, and then get directions and make the drive out. It is so worth the trip. Our thanks to Jordan for having us. And as always, if you have a deeper root story that you want us to share, we gotta hear from you. Fill out the form on the website. It's farmandfleet.com slash deeper roots. We'd love to come and share the story. Talk to you later. Bye. Hey, remember to subscribe on YouTube, leave a review, smash the like button, just get with us. Inside Wisconsin is brought to you by Baycare Clinic, Blaine's Farm and Fleet, the University of wisconsin Platteville, Roll Tech, Festival Foods, Capital Credit Union, North Star Mohican Casino Resort, American Family Insurance, Miller Lite, and Aaron's Company. Sit down.